Christmas Eve is always a joyous time and me, for me personally, even when I was a little kid, I loved Christmas. I was raised Roman Catholic and my family would get up at midnight and go to midnight mass and it was like the only time of the year that my parents let me get up late. You know what I'm saying? So I loved it as a kid. I'm like, yahoo! You know, just, it was a great thing. Uh, now there's also you know, the whole thing that kids get into, of you know, the presents and the toys and all that stuff. But the joy of Christmas has always been Christ in my family and in my life and in the world, around the world, Christmas is Christ. And we tend to take that for granted because it happens year after year. And so I want to remind you of a couple dark realities that we deal with and all of us have been in touch with in this last year and some of us currently and perhaps maybe even 2014. I got a call just two days ago from a family who lost a loved one and they're going to be having a funeral right after Christmas. Nobody wants that, right? That's the pain of grief, the pain of loss, uh, just a tragedy uh, that they suffered, an evil that they suffered uh, because the young man that died was a hit and run victim and the police are looking for the person that killed him. And so you, you, you I mean, I could just hear you groan, right? We recognize that this world is not filled with the joy of Christ or the, the beauty and power and glory of God in every person's heart and in every place in this world. But that's why Christmas is even more important. It's more important that we celebrate the truth of Christmas on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and also in our hearts and in our lives of faith in Christ every day. There's a reason why light is so important to the Christmas story. There's a reason we have lights on a Christmas tree, that we have Advent candles that are lit. All of these things involve light itself. And the Word of God tells us that God created light, that God is light. And in the Gospel of John, as I'm going to share in just a moment, Jesus is the light of the world. And I want to draw a parallel between our life and the light of Jesus. If you look at science, and I mean every science, from biology to astrophysics, every scientist will tell you the same thing. If you remove the light of our sun, this planet and all life on it will die. You and I cannot live without light. And if you've ever had a brief experience of total darkness, you know how unbelievably debilitating that is. If you're in a cave a mile down and they turn the lights out, it's a scary, scary sensation. In my own life, I've only had a, a couple brief instances when, man, I could not wait for the sun to come up. I was actually riding my motorcycle from Phoenix, Arizona to Sacramento. I was 19 years old and I just missed mom and dad. I was, you know, going to school in Phoenix and I wanted to come home for just a weekend. So I got on my motorcycle, which was my only transportation, and I'm riding. And I'm riding in the middle of winter and I'm riding overnight. That was stupid. I'm just, you know, I, I was 19 then, thought I knew better, but I'm, you know, I'm older now. I can tell you I was stupid. So I'm riding over the grapevine in the middle of night, in the middle of winter, and there's ice and snow on the ground, and I actually got hypothermia. Thought I was going to die. I made it over that. I go, I'm on I-5. I'm coming you know, through the Bakersfield area, hit that pea suit fog, drenched me to the bone. I was already chilled, and now I feel like I'm going to die. And it's dark, and the, the semi-trucks are flying by me at 65, 75 miles an hour, and I'm hugging the white line on the far right side, trying to see because the fog is so thick. I can't see my hand in front of my helmet. The darkness is pitch black. The fog is thicker than you know pea soup. And I feel like I should die. I want to die. I want this to end. When the sun finally came up, I felt this spark of hope within me that I had not felt for hours because for hours in that darkness and in that fog and in that pain, I felt like I was in like the third level of hell. Now that was only temporary. That was a brief few hours. And then the sun came up and I rejoiced. Now I wasn't walking with the Lord. I wasn't a Christian. I wasn't following Jesus. But when that light came up, I was rejoicing. And if you've been in a dark place recently, 
You might be looking for any source of light. If you're in pain, if you're depressed, if you've suffered loss, you might be looking for God to give you some hope. Amen? And Jesus Christ is that hope. Jesus Christ didn't come on Christmas Eve, you know, to be born in Bethlehem, which is all true, just so we could celebrate Christmas with, you know, turkey dinners or ham dinners and presents under a tree. That's not the purpose of Christmas. God's plan is much bigger, and God's plan is to give us the very light of God into our very core being, the, our deepest soul, our deepest hearts. God wants to give us himself. So I want to read a few verses out of the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by Him. And apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. We know him, John the Baptist. He came for a witness that he might bear witness of the light, Jesus Christ, that all might believe in him. He was not the light, but came that he might bear witness of the light. There was the true light which coming into the world enlightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own. Those who were his own did not receive him. But here is your hope. This is God's gift to you. But as many as received Jesus to him, to them, he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. He was born completely human, a helpless baby. That's why we celebrate Christmas. And we beheld his glory, glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and and truth. Jesus is the light of God. In John chapter 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. I want you to consider that. And I want you to think back to Moses himself standing on a mountain when God drew him to a mysterious fire that did not consume a bush that was being burned. And Moses asked God, God, what is your name? And God said, I am that I am. He is self-existent. He has always been God. Jesus has always been God. So he, seven times in the Gospel of John, he says, I am. And in chapter 8, he says, I am the light of the world. He is your light. If you have any darkness at all in your world, in your personal being, I invite you tonight to receive the gift from Jesus that is his light into you. We're going to have a candle lighting service in just a moment where each of you are going to get to light a candle. And it's always beautiful. It's full of meaning, but I hope that the meaning will be deeper than just simply a candle held in your hand tonight. It's my prayer that if you choose to light a candle tonight, you'll be inviting Christ into your soul in a fresh way. That it won't be a, an empty, even meaningless, just something to do because you're in church kind of thing. Right? I mean, how many times have you been in a church and you've stood when they stood and you've sat when they sat and you've sang when they sang, but you've left untouched? Does that happen? It's my prayer that tonight, if you choose to light a candle, it will, be because, it will be because you personally want the very light of God, Jesus himself, to come into your heart, your mind, your life, 
your total being and give you his hope, give you his love, give you his peace, give you himself, his presence to be with you forever. I'm going to say a prayer. So I'm going to invite you to bow your heads and pray along with me. If, if your heart desires this, just say your amen to God. You don't have to say anything out loud. I'll pray. You can pray yourself and your heart to God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, each of us here can say that you are our Father. And you are the Father of Jesus as he was born in human flesh. You caused him to be planted in Mary's womb, to develop as a human baby for nine months, and to be born as all of us have been born. Father, you gave Jesus in human flesh life, even though, Jesus, you are God. You created all life. It is a tremendous mystery that you chose to do this for us. But even now, we humbly say, thank you. Thank you for giving yourself for me. Thank you for coming to earth for me. Thank you for being born helpless independent and small in a dark stable so that you could grow to be the light of the world. Lord Jesus, I invite you now to come into me and be my light, both now and forever. Help me, Jesus, to walk in your light, both now and with you forever. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.